Good morning, everybody. How on a day? I don't do this early. I won't do this thing since, eh, but I've been down for like a couple of days, man. honestly speaking. I've been down. I had a bit of food poisoning. You know, I tried to put a good man down. I'm not no worrying. I don't miss anything. I said, take me off. Me go. I shut up. I don't talk again. I don't talk. Uh, I'm back. <laughs> I don't miss anything. I don't worry. I say, if any of this one, they say, show your network. Or show your She will not get network. I don't get network. I don't. I never get body reach to get network. In fact, how many African government or country get network? Now, MTN network are the use. Wi-Fi. So if there's problem, say this MTN network. Oh, no say Sheo network. Sheo no get. You see, they say your. You say <laughs> your network. I no get network. Sheo no get network. <laughs> She will never ever get network. I know where I won't see network. Where I won't see network. <laughs> the network belongs to MTN. The one where they use here. <laughs> the one where they use here get uh, the MTN. Not she will, she will not get network. I'm sorry. No lie. No, so many lies. They don't everywhere I go there. So many lies. Left, right, and center. Lies, lies, lies about she up and down the place. I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know what to do anymore. No kind of lie. Yesterday, I see seen you like I see the stay from my papa house. Of which I of which, seriously, I don't mind living in my father's house. You don't say my papa house, the museum now. So I don't feel you stay inside museum. We will go they look me at my family every day. Are we part of the museum? <laughs> Are we artifacts? Eh? But apart from this young, I wish I want to stay there. You know, they're crazy. Who are they pay eh, all these bills? I live in my father's house. Am I bad? <laughs> if you're a power Prince Charles, now the king of England, where did they stay? Not in mama house. Tell me one prince, where did they stay for your papa house? If you're a house, if you're a family home, where did they go? The house will make everybody come up for us now. <laughs> now also now, now also <laughs> if the thing day like that all on a billionaire for Nigeria now their house they have children they stay now even though not be their house where the papa they stay with the mama now one of the house where the papa buy or you know they never go stay I mean it day use it if it's there use it you know if it's there use it <coughs> anyway, at the time I say all the things why they tell you are normal. If you uh, are elite, tell you are those things. Both you buy elite, Hausa, Ibo, Fulani, BBOF, any of these, you are big men, they always worship. When they buy, use our blood, buy motor for their children. And I say, we'll go online. As the bastard children that you are. And I will go online, begin to swear for my own parents. Hey, where my bad day? Where this one? They do this one. Where my bad day? Where this? You know? So, I'm not surprised. If they tell you now the truth, then you will suddenly, maybe you will lose all this respect. You will look, they say, ah, all these men, who they be now? So, now be people caretaker. And I know be even a guy. Maybe now I go open, but they don't feel tell you now. They don't feel tell you now that one. They don't tell him that one. Now understand. So now me must tell you now. So all this you know, lie, lie, you know, they lie. She will do this one. Actually, all this you know, things, she will know. Yes, see me. I don't want. I'm ghetto fabulous, bro. My papa, you see, fella, my papa, he lived in his father's house till he was about forty. Now born, they born the mama house. That house, that fella house, where they shout. They born fella house. They born fella house. No be fella house. Now, fella, mama, get the house. <laughs> fella, don't be the first house. At first, our only house. Till about 1980, they finished our house for Gbemi Sola about 1987. So, fella must have been 50. 50 years old. 
I never knew my father has a rich man. I they tell everybody, say, my father don't get money. Now, Sonia, they didn't get money. Then Ebenezer Obey, Shino Peters, uh, you know. Now, those guys get money. Fella never had money. My papa with me, I know. He never had money. We were ghetto fab. Ghetto fab, bro. And I'm used to it. I love that life. My apart, once I can buy the things I want, do the things I like, go where I like, I don't need much. I they tell you now. So that's why I cannot be controlled. That people with the long throat, long throat, you want everything, you need everything. I'm ghetto fab, bro. Understand that. Ghetto fab. All day, all every all day, all night, 24, 7, 365. Ghetto fab. We know they hide down. <laughs> you understand? We know they hide down. We don't shave. But I'm not living in my dad's house. I wish. You know, I wish. <laughs> so now, to take on back to this whole history lesson of Lagos. Africa, the old Africa is no more. Lagos is a very famous place all over the world. Anywhere you go for this world, people know the city of Lagos. Nobody aside of us, they call this place Eko. I repeat, nobody outside of us, we, 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 they call this place Eko. The name of this place is Lagos. From here to Timbuktu, to Sydney, to uh, Bangladesh, back to Alaska, to Peru, Brazil, Chile, in South Africa. Brothers and sisters, Lagos, now they call them. Nobody they call them Eko. And I will tell you why. Because Europeans have renamed the world. They have recreated the world in their image. The world has been recreated in the image of Europeans. So you must understand that fact. Stop living in the past that no longer exists. Is that's that's some nostalgia? Yeah, that's nostalgia. It is not reality. It is not reality, bro. And all they did, what you say? Yeah, let me say. Uh, say you uh, make your country come back now. It's not their own. They never gave it back. What do they need to take it back? It's still their own. They own majority of the money, the businesses, the top oil companies in your country. Are they Nigerian? The top telecommunications company in your country. Are they Nigerian? The top food industries in your country. Are they Nigerian? Name and they only put. They, there's a law that all these people they must get local person as chairman. A local must be the chairman. A Nigerian must be the chairman. Meaning say the elites negotiate their own share for their family. They use your blood, our fight for independence, to negotiate share for themselves inside the stealing. Say as long as one of us be chairman, so we can appoint our family, we can chop inside. You, you think it's a Nigerian company? The way you go to school, they, they teach you Oyibo, Oyibo mentality, European mentality inside school. But because the school is owned by a Nigeria, is in Nigeria, you say it's a Nigerian school. There's nothing Nigerian or African about our schools. They are all European. How about the banks? Because is it because your bank is owned by a Nigerian? You think your bank is Nigerian? It's not a Nigerian bank. That institution is European. The way they don't give you loan as a black man for here. Now the way they don't give any black man loan for the same bank anywhere in the world. It doesn't matter who owns the bank. It is the institution, the institutionalization of the financing. But you know they see that one because they don't put a, they don't put veil for now. I want they don't put all these their black puppets to buy their drink. They go carry one black celebrity. Can't say now he own own the drink. He doesn't own shit. Where he wants to see distillery? Where he wants to see money build distillery? He won't make it wreck. Where he want you won't kill them. It's branding. They put their face. They give them a share. The owners are still white Europeans in the background. The only way you can know is go and look at the board of directors of the company, the shareholders. When Jay Z was going to, uh, when they were going to use Jay Z to gentrify the whole of Brooklyn in America, 
to build stadium for the Brooklyn Nets. That's what they lie to black people saying that Jay Z get the Jay Z get the basketball team. Oh, hey, Jay Z basketball. Nah, when they pursue all the black people finish build them, they realize that Jay Z only owned 0.06 percent of the Brooklyn Nets, which he later sold for 1.6 million dollars. That means he sold out his people for 1.6 million dollars. They did. We are FEJZ. He move out all the thousands of black people out of their neighborhood. Look at the old Brooklyn now. I don't know if you go to anybody they go to America here. Go to Brooklyn, Williamsburg, to Clinton Hill. White gentrification has happened. Like what is happening in my baby small small. Some white, some white is moving in with the before you know now, by the time I'm 45, everywhere will be everywhere will be white. <laughs> That's what gentrification will be. I don't they see the gentrification don't start for my baby. Small, 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 small. I don't they see some kind of gentrification. One white, don't they call? Two white, don't they call? <coughs> you know. <laughs> so that's what they do to you. But when I be muku. Your day here, they die for Europeans institutions to survive. You are here dying to so, to keep European institutions going. Yeah, yeah, never, nah, yeah, never get Lagos. That's why I tell you people, you are not fans of Fela. I see Fela and my father. I said with my full chest. When person like that born you, you are one of the luckiest people in the world, and you do yourself a great disservice. To let people use their mouths to let you diminish your whole heritage with them. Not be my fault, say, when I don't get the kind of papa where I get. Not my fault. But the fact that I don't get that kind of papa, I can never betray. So I will tell you one million times. You people only follow the man. Because me, I grew up as Fela's son. So I know there's no love there. Fela win Unani. The thing where the thing where they talk say they happen. Whether they like say no, they happen. Because you know they touch you at that time. Don't want to touch more people. Poverty rate, one fella they alive that thirty percent. Now it's over 70 80 percent. So if they talk to Nani, Nani he win on hands down. Now that's come. They're going to realize they're not prophets. Prophet, prophet. Now those kind of things. Nani if you make Africa move forward, the lies. Fella not the prophet. But the things when they talk, they affect you at that time. You no know, affect you at parents. So they stay for Suruleri. Poverty never reach Suruleri. It never reach Yaba. It never reach Antony. It never reach Maryland. It never reach Ikeja. Poverty is still there for the uh, fringes of Lagos. Now poverty day. And some neighborhoods like Mushi, like Adege. Are you why you don't wonder why do the big men of this country want to all go and live in VI and Ikoyi? We be seen a colonialist. Now in Stanfield, the old VI, and they build them for themselves. Victoria's Island. When they crazy me, Victoria and your mama, Victoria and your auntie, I be Victoria and your wife. Who be Victoria? When they stay for Victoria Island, they won't go stay there. All of them pack themselves to be near white now. White people went under colonialism. You see, why don't say this? Our education is not for us. How can we not learn in our secondary and primary school? life under colonialism because for for us to appreciate where we what did they happen we should know what our parents were our these things happened till 1950 now 1960 is stop this is not 1860 it's not 1760 colonialism stopped in 1960 just here 1960 there are people still alive that lived in it our as our grandfathers needed pass we need get pass to enter vi because we are savages we know if they're near oibo they pick some of them all these they are prominent yoruba what did they make noise all these lawyer first lawyer first doctor they pick them they take them i i put them for vi too so they then we enter they were the civilized blacks very happy you understand oibo like they're near them so they believe because we both let them near their special past their other brothers where we both keep far the multitude the so-called masses where we both push far so they were willing to keep that system going because it put them above their own people that's why i laugh at nigerians when they turn themselves to the property of these people in the name of election you are batified i'm articulate 
I'm obedient. You do not become part of your leader. If your leader is truly for the people, he becomes part of you. Your leader will become part of you. Not be you go sell, you go sell yourself. All of you now become part of one person. I am a batified. I am articulate. I am obedient. How can you become part of? He becomes part of you, but they don't want. They don't ever want to be part of you. That's what you must understand. They don't ever want to be part of you. They want to talk at you. They never want to talk to you. Understand that. Understand that. These are people that are just happy to run this system for Europeans. Europeans don't own Lagos. We've not owned Lagos in a long, 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 long time. It'd be like me, you build house and then you sell the house. Is it still your house? The fact that you built that house, is it still your house after you have sold it? No, it's no, longer, it's no longer your house. It's no longer your house. Now, the person will buy that house. If you keep the facade of the house, if you keep the shape of the house, but when you enter, you go down change things. Not be your TV go dead there. Not be your, you go change things. If you don't even come out door, where door there before, you go down move the door, go to that place. You are in some kind of room. If you don't break and turn to a bigger room, if you don't modify, you go modify the house inside or outside as in like. That's what we are living in. So if you be fella fan, you could not say fella get one song, what do they call MOP? But many of you now, I keep saying it, fella win you, one, Two, you like to smoke it go away. You like it go die. But you go see yard show say nah, show the smoke it go. But you like it go die. So for that two, that reason to smoke it go. And you like a shower pass anything. Oh my god. If you guys not marry your own women, at what you marry them, they is responsible. You marry them, they take care of them. You just want to do a lotion business all over the place. You take a you fella the follow woman. You say the follow woman. <coughs> the the crystal world says so if that is the case so why do they still own it if they left europeans have not left how did they leave this is what I'm i just said how did europeans leave they did not leave because their institutions are still here the institutions that they used to run it are still the ones the things running this place oibo did not leave until we dismantled their institutions Oibo did not leave the english the british did not leave nigeria they are still here i've told you go and look at the board of directors of almost all your banks look, everything is european owned in this country man they say about 70 percent of our economy is in foreign control so if 70 percent of your economy is in foreign control what do you mean you own who left left where is American economy under foreign control 70% or is British economy under 70% control? How many British multinational, uh, how many British corporations have Nigerian ownership? How many? If you know Fela well, as I said, you go hear Fela get one song, what do they call MOP, where he write as the soundtrack for the movement of the people. The ideology, fella put them into song then. The song is called MOP. And for this song, fella talk history. The song is a simple history lesson. The song is a simple history lesson. Fella say, Oba Kosoko de Lagos, where Englishman arrive, see them Kosoko. They were doing business at that time with the Portuguese. I'll give you the little uh, historical uh, context of this fight between um, Kosoko, who was backed by the Portuguese, and Akintoye, his nephew, who was backed by the British. Kosoko was selling slaves. To the Portuguese to take to the Americas. But the British then had launched colonialism. You remember very well that even America then was a British colony before they fought for their independence. America had not yet become empire, but they still needed slaves. But they were not with the British anymore. 
if you remember. Now the British haven't discovered colonialism. Colonialism is colonialism simply means say slave enslavement in your own land. The English had moved from a farming agricultural based industry. They were moving to the industrial based industry. The so called industrialization was happening. This was the industrialization era. So they didn't need um, agricultural product anymore. What did they need? Now, raw materials to power the factories of England. So the English all over the world did not want slavery because they needed people to work in their own land, to go and mine for the gold that is in Africa, that is not in England, to grow the rubber, the cocoa that they need to make chocolate, the rubber for tires, to mine for tin, columbite, all these raw materials that they need, they need us to work in our lands. So the British were fighting to keep us here. The Portuguese were fighting to take us away. That is the clash between Kosoko and Akintoyi. Abi, yeah. Yeah, and Akintoyi. That's his name. I thought it was Akintola, but it's Akintoyi. I'm right. Fela say, Oba Kosoko de Lagos when Englishman arrive. Englishman and Akito ye they come drive Kosoko away. USC come come. Uh, USC come John Holt they come too. They day many many years Africans them not agree. Why you take our land by force them as the Englishman? The land were already taken by force. See this fight where Kosoko fights the British. I mean they go and look at your history. They get one. There's a that a uh, uh, issue of African colony with the Netflix. Talk about this issue. Kosoko beats the British when they when the fight starts, they run. <laughs> the British run because you know they didn't expect that kind of fighting. When hand to hand, we see them, they run, go house, go bring big, big bomb and boat. They burn the whole, they bombard the whole Lagos Island. They raised it to the ground. That's what they take subjugate all this Lagos Island. They, they destroy every Every goddamn, even the palace. You understand me? Uh -huh. That's why the British come to take Lagos. Yes, so we are there for the song. Uh, why you take our land by force, them as the Englishman? We have to come to some kind of an arrangement. Englishman, no one agree. They start to hire yeah, yeah, Africans to fight them brothers and kill them too. They give them guns, uniforms and law. Fight your brothers and kill them too. We they behind your back. We be government, big government, big government, big government. These people that were that they picked to fight, that them they rule. Who do you think is ruling you in this? What do you think is going on? What do you think they happen for this country? Do you think Tinubu is in charge? Even though Tinubu don't win, do you think Tinubu is in charge of this country? And I think Tinubu will make law about this country. If you believe, if you don't believe that Europeans own this country, say this whole world, this country, and you are not fighting to take it back, do try waiting. You know, see what they do, Gaddafi. I don't want to talk about Lumumba and Nkrumah. Right now, Gaddafi, your backyard. Look at what they did in Iraq. See what they do for Syria. Look what they do for Yemen right now. Look what is going on in Yemen. But the thing about you Nigerians, I said that church and mosque they scatter on our brain. When they say show the smoke go, but the worst opioid, the worst drug is religion. And all of you are on it. You are doped up. You are doped up on religion, out of your fucking minds. Because you think you are special. You think something they happen for here is special. It's happening all over the world. But we are the only ones not doing anything about our own situation. Look at South America, bro. Go look South America. Follow their history. Send a military coup, nation, and waiting they never go through. Exactly what we go through. That day they take our brothers and sisters, enslave them. Look at the history of Brazil, Peru, Chile. Look at what is going on today in Venezuela. You 
You think say if we win, if you win, uh, you win election for this country. Say a people's movement win election for this country. When I say the rich people of this country not go fight war against you now. You think you're not going to make this country hard for you? They must make you hate your own revolution. They will make you hate your own revolution. You will hate your own freedom. That's why everybody hate fella. And that's why maybe everybody now too must hate me. Because you must hate your freedom. You must hate the ability to be free. I tell listen, to be free is a mindset, say, say, nobody will control me. So I they tell young people, if you dare for school, say, and you bribe lecturer, you are incapable of freedom. If you dare school, they bribe lecturer, no matter what in a lecturer do, because this is university. If you do your test, you do your exam, you study as you're supposed to study, nobody can fail you. You go contest that result, they go bring that to the other people, that's review what you write. Nobody will just fail you because you feel like that. You fight. Say when they bring what you write, make the other people come look at. But because you say no, you know you know feel right nada. You are incapable. They don't train you. They train us to be incapable of understanding freedom, of being free. You go to fear to free. Because if you're free, you know if you call a liar to beg for money. All the so-called big men, when I ask not get money rich, the big boys, when I see the call people to beg for money. The world in our country self, where they say eh, Nigeria is a great country, we call it beg for money. Beg to job. So you are afraid of your own freedom. I understand. So you they, they hold on to nostalgia. You're about get Lagos. Ibo get away. I will start get car. Now you don't own shit. You don't own shit. Nothing it has been taken from you and your leaders. Your so called, they're not leaders, they are rulers. And your rulers are put there to make sure you don't ask for it back. To make sure you never do anything to take it back, to make it your own. Wait in the land. Land, the institution of land ownership in Africa. Wait in the land. Me say every African is entitled to a piece of Africa. That is the old African way. As they born you, you are entitled to land. Can you are you entitled to anything today? I'm telling you that Africa way you talk about is no more. It's no more, fam. It's gone. We must rebuild, we must remake, we must reimagine, we must recreate. But that is the job. But so far, you are all distracted from that. You are fighting for crumbs of Europeans, fighting to uphold European institutions, fighting to uphold European and Arabic religions and institutions among you. Uh, you know, diminishing yourself. Uh, that's what yesterday for International Women's Day. No kind of stupid thing. We are not here yesterday about African people. No kind of nonsense. We are not here yesterday. I was boiling in my soul at the stupidity that is exhibited in the highest echelons of so-called Africa intelligentsia, the African academics and activists talking nonsense. Europeans and Arabs are the subjugators of women. The Africans that practice subjugation of women are pseudo-Europeans and pseudo-Arabs. I repeat, the subjugation of women is a European and Arabic trait. It is Africans that are fake Europeans and fake Arabs that subjugate their women. Many African kings have embraced the Bible and the Quran. In fact, the Olu of Ibadan died with the Quran on his chest. Yes, I wonder if the day the uh, king of Saudi Arabia will die and say they should put Ifa something with him to be buried and you said that, that kind of person is a yoruba king you'll be behaving here i say he's a yoruba king he's not a yoruba king he's an arabic king what a man desires is what he is is your desires what you desire in your heart that determines how you relate with the world your mind if your mind is not so i always say to people a woman's place is in the kitchen 
Whose proverb is that? Whose proverb? Whose historical, cultural asili, the germinating seed of their culture brought out such a proverb? A woman's place is in the kitchen. That is an English proverb. That is an English proverb. I repeat, that is an English proverb. Give me the equivalent in Yoruba. I don't speak Igbo, so maybe I don't know. I don't speak Hausa, but I know Yoruba language. Give me the equivalent of a woman's place is in the kitchen, in your own culture. Yeah, give me. Give me. You don't have it. It doesn't exist. Just the way we now beat our children. Something we learn from spear the rod and spoil the child. We beat our children, we beat our women. The same way Europeans came to beat them in our presence. So you think that is what it means? Your, this your Europeanized elites think that is what it means to be a strong man now. Don't you understand? In old Africa, in the real Africa, is there anything like lawyer? Is there anything like accountant? Is there anything like doctor? No, all these things were socialized already. A 10 year old child will name all the leaves, all the healing leaves in every forest for you, the attributes, except your sickness deep. Now you go meet Babalao. We know some secret, maybe ancient secret, maybe now give you extra help. But real medicine was already socialized. Every, the law was socialized. Everybody know the law. For old Africa, you know if you lie and you, nobody need lawyer. Talk with you, happen, talk with you. Everybody, everybody know the law because the law was just. The law was about justice. This legal system of Europeans, what would they use now? What we need lawyer. Because it is not about justice. It is about legality. Because when you do something wrong and you have power, you can legalize what is wrong. You can legalize what is wrong. That's why we need lawyer to follow Oyibo law. African law is not about legality. African law is about justice. Where is those African courts? Any African courts in this country in Lagos? Take me to the African court in Lagos. Let me go and make case. Not Oyibo law you they use with lawyer. Say you are a Where is your African court? No, no, let me tell you. Africans didn't need lawyer, doctors. So Oibo had to come and teach the first, not to me, Williams, first lawyer. You know, all those kind of things. They had to come and teach. Now, the way Europeans teach their own children, hmm? it's not the same way they came to teach your own elite, the, those first elites. Those they are monkey where they train. Those they are trained, first trained monkeys. It's not the same way they train them. They train them with whipping and lashing. Because those Oibodos missionaries thought they were monkeys. See, they be monkey. They don't hear word if you don't lash them. Oibodos, you know, they lash in children. When in children, they talk, come Africa. They lash them anyhow. So they say, thought that that's what it meant to teach. You go enter classroom, they go they lash you to teach. Does that make sense? All this is this borrowed behaviors. So we normalize it now among ourselves. Say Africans, they born witches before. What is the word for lynching in your language? Lynching, now they can't teach us. And I keep telling you people, billions of pounds were spent. Millions of lives were mortgaged. You know how many Europeans died? Millions, Europeans were dying like flies to take over this world, man. They mortgaged lives. They spent billions to teach us these things. Now that these things have been proven to be bad, destroying us, is anybody spending that same kind of billions or expending such effort to unteach us those things? No. Nobody is using effort to teach on teach us to say, ah, all these things we will tell you and a lie. Hey, they do seminar, come to our the way they came to the way they come here when they don't come back slave. 
Are they coming here now to come and re repair the things they have spoiled? No, we are left to do it on our own. And still, they still put gates man to make sure we don't go outside. So all these things what we will normalize for our own mind by ourselves for this European. We don't normalize the hate what they get for us. So we think we, we don't understand. The, we don't even think. And that's what I realize. We don't even think about our real situation. We are afraid to think about our real situation. Because if you think about your real situation, hmm? if you think about your real situation, you know if you do the nonsense, what you do. So you decide not to think about your situation. That's the fact. You decide not to think about the situation. You decide to think about the things that are not, have nothing to do with your situation. Now those, that, that's the hill all of you would like to die on. The hill that will not change anything. Answers. What will happen after the answers? Ending SARS, will it change police brutality? Will it stop police brutality? They didn't even say stop police brutality. They say end SARS. So if you end SARS, so normal police is still allowed to slap and beat and do whatever they like. I don't understand the concept, the people that come up with this concept to make sure that you are distracted to go and die on top of a hill that will not change anything in your reality. Me, I'm a revolutionary, I'm not a matter. It's only matters that want to die for nothing. I can never die for nothing. I am here to live for something. That's why I'm a revolutionary. I live for something. I stand for that thing. Anywhere that thing they go, I'm following that thing there. If it will not lead to my death, let it be so. But I'm not going to just carry myself and say, hey, go and die. Never. Emiko. <laughs> Emiko. <laughs> A me call. I will never. I will never. <laughs> I've seen too much. I know too much. So it's not. It's not that I'm proud. This is just the. Is the burden of knowledge. Is the loneliness of knowledge. I swear, knowledge is not lonely. In this Nigeria, knowledge is lonely. When you know, you are just lonely. Because you're telling people, you think you are crazy. You are just alienated. You are almost in exile among your own people. Uh, you are almost in exile among your own people. You know, the more the the more I grow, the more I realize what my father was going through. And what my father, when I was growing up, fella became like such a recluse. I would wonder, why is my dad? Why fella be like this? Eh? Why fella be like this? Man, suppose they enjoy life. They go. My father, they go out. Fella would lie down in his bed in one place, 12, 13 hours, fourteen hours. If you stand up, you stand up, you walk to the balcony. You walk to his parlor. Go back to his room. He did not go out. So I realized, say, not be say, now that I grow up, me say, I need to go out. Why can't I go out? Because I'm just angry when I go out. I'm just angry. I'm no, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. That's the word. When I go out, it disappoints me. The level of conversation among the people that are supposed to be advancing this country, what they are thinking about, what they show the world versus what they really are, it is disappointing. You now realize, ah, Nigerian people are really on their own. Because all the people that you, Nigerian people, use your energies, your attention to elevate up, they will not be telling you, don't worry, I'm coming for you, I'm coming back for you. As soon as you elevate them, they just become their own individuals, forgetting all of you, exist talk, they will start talking down stop that talking down they don't care any i just say yeah that's what i see so i just go i hardly i hardly go out nobody can say oh we see she in one place one day you can't see me there and see me there again i see me there is a lie nah nah i come out that day ni. you understand my school don't come outside <laughs> teach you more about the ownership of the world we they live under imperialism imperialism the only thing where they do for the so called independence day is flag changing we should be calling that a flag changing day flag 
changing day. I repeat, we should call that a flag changing day. Because the institutions that were used to subjugate us in colonialism, they left them in place. So that means say, certain Africans agreed to run those institutions. And until we topple those institutions and make them our own, we are, you, cannot, you can never say it, you own anything. And now, let me tell you the only reason why Sub-Saharan Africa hmm, is not like South Africa. Europeans plan to settle the world. They plan, it's called living space. Europeans plan to turn the whole world to their own, to live everywhere. To subjugate the world. Them and the Arabs, they are imperialists. Their own thing, not do them. What was given to them, greedy bunch of bastards. Whatever is their own is not enough until they take what is everybody's own in the name of anything before it was in the name of civilizing Oyibo and Arabs uh, these people are savages want to civilize them want to teach them how to read Roar. then uh, want to help them develop colonialism Roar. today is democracy oh, they are not democratic Iraq Roar. Libya Roar. Anywhere, they, anywhere they don't have control they have a doctrine that they believe everybody must believe in that doctrine and for that doctrine's sake they can come and take whatever is your own because the doctrine says so that is the game they've been playing right europeans plan to settle in nigeria in ghana just the way they settled in south africa in the whole of southern africa not when i say south africa more than not to say i mean that country i mean southern africa Go Zimbabwe until Mugabe showed them Pepe Die. You know, Namibia, Lesotho, uh, Swaziland, all that Southern African peninsula. They own all the land. They own, even in Nigeria, bro. See, let me tell you. Go and look at your land holdings in this country. Go and look at it. Look at people controlling vast swaths. Farmland, any kind of land, anything they want, they take it. Anything Europeans want. You don't hear your government say Europeans want something here, yeah, they say no. Anything they want, they call foreign investment. Ni. Yeah, foreign investment has come. Foreign investment, that's what they'll be telling you. But whatever Europeans want from Africa, they take because it's their own. They put their boys there to, to legalize the taking. I see their law is about legality. They want to legalize the taking. So they put their own boys there to sign, saying, now you agree, may the country come. Just the way your forefathers were signing X on piece of paper that did not even understand what was written on it. Or you both tell them, say, oh, we want to just protect you so that uh, when those our brothers come to, you know, because they know that they call thief people. So when we come to thief people, uh, we will fight them for you. Protect, protectorate. Uh, it's protectorate. We will protect you. Protectorate. Protect. Now, protectorate turn to colonialism. You don't own ownership. So don't worry. Don't worry. Me, I will be telling you how it's going. When you are now 70 years old, like your father today, that your child now is suffering like you today, you'll be saying, ah, she won't tell me that time. He's a prophet. Ah, he's a prophet. She is a prophet. Okay. <laughs> you are not waiting and plan. Why did you not fight? Like she prophet. is a prophet. <laughs> So now, these people could not live here for one reason only, malaria. Sub-Saharan Africa had something called malaria, brothers and sisters. It was decimating white people. It was killing them like flies. The Lagos Com Commission, the High Commission in Lagos, that they are, the, the embassy, it was called the Iron Coffin. The old embassy waiting for that Lagos and another former. It was called the Iron Coffin. About four out of every ten white people sent there died. Four out of every ten died. So they realized that some part of the world they could not settle. 
they needed to leave and allow their local agents to run it. Basically like supervisors. So what you have here is a bunch of supervisors supervising the extraction of your wealth for foreign interests. That's why with all the money that they make, say they cannot build anything. I'm telling they can't build anything. Look at what they have built in Dubai. You see, Dubai is Arab imperialist headquarters for the Arabs. That's the headquarters. That's why the Arabs in Egypt cannot make Egypt look like Dubai. Even though Egypt has oil just like Dubai. The only African that was trying to make the only one of them when can't turn himself to African was Gaddafi. Gaddafi turned himself to African man, turned himself to Bedouin. So you know they do Arab again. Go and read what happened with Gaddafi two years before his death. Gaddafi paid for the African Union to be established. Gaddafi turned towards Africa. Gaddafi stopped looking to the east. He started looking towards Africa. He said, we must unite with Africa. Libya is in Africa. Libya is not Arabic. They connive with the Europeans to destroy that Libya and destroy him himself. You think this is a joke? Kevin Hart was going to play in Egypt. Kevin Hart was going to do a comedy show in Egypt last week. He said Egypt is in Africa. Egypt is an African country. They canceled the show. I said Kevin Hart wanted to do show in Egypt last week. Kevin Hart said Egypt is in Africa. Those Arabs canceled his fucking show. Say Egypt is an Arabic country. During World Cup, you you Mughals, like you, you Africans know how to disgrace somebody, Sha. Somebody will just be here doing chess for you people. Now just disgrace the person. Morocco is winning in a World Cup. You people are shouting, it's for Africa, it's for Africa. The Moroccan captain came out and said, We are doing this for Arab the Arabic world. This is for Arabia. This is for Arabic world. This is for the Arabic world. When will you understand that you have no friends? When will you understand that you have no friends? You are looking for people. I think they go do something. They say, the international, uh, after the election, say, the international committee will arrest the people. They will arrest. I was laughing. I say, oh, the naivety. The naivety of these people. So the only reason Nigeria doesn't look like Egypt or South Africa, Southern Africa today, the only reason we say the mosquito, the sickness was too much. They couldn't settle here. You understand me? Europeans, the white people of this world, they are from Europe. Europe is one continent. They are from Europe. Have you seen Australia recently? They are the ones occupying it. They are like the full Australia. They're the majority in Australia today. Do you know that Australia is a black country owned by the Aboriginals? Blacker than me and you. How many of you know that Australia is not European? Do you know that those white people are from Europe? All the white people you see in Australia today are from Europe. Do you know that? You think they, are, they were born there? They went there and they took that whole continent from the owners of it. Those people that own it are still there, but they dare not claim, say, they are trying, they are fighting. They are the owners. They are the original owners. But Australia is not their own. United States of America, does it belong to Europeans? Well, are Europeans the owner of North America, Canada, and United States? It's owned by Native Americans. The Inuits of Alaska. The Incas of Peru. The Mexican Aztecs. The Aztecs. The Cherokee. These are the owners of America. Where are they today in their own land? They are almost exterminated. They are almost exterminated. They are not up to 10% of their own fucking land. What's wrong with you? 
Let's go to South America. How many natives are left in South In fact, in Argentina, the natives in Argentina are less than 1% of the population of Argentina today. The, I repeat, the natives of Argentina are less than 1% of the population of Argentina today. Because they speak Spanish in Mexico, they'll say Hispanic. Hispanic is not a race, so don't let them lie to you. It just means they came from Spain. They are Europeans that took that place today and they speak Spanish. Hispanic not be racial. They are white people from Europe, from Portugal, from Spain. They have taken all these things from everybody in the world. And they have taken yours too. They have taken everything that belongs to you too. But you are too, your, your elites, these people you worship, that tell you to forget your problem. For three and a half years, them and their students, their boys, will be playing pangolo for you, distracting you, telling you, hey, you go think of your problem all the time. You go crazy if you think of your problem. Forget your problem. You see, you forget your problem for three and a half years. Six months to election, you now want to carry your problem on your head. Thinking you can solve anything with one year, year voting of the same people that are just there to continue this rubbish. You want to vote for somebody to continue the rubbish. The best person to continue the rubbish. You are looking for the best person to complete the rubbish. How many of you are, how many of them are really telling you what is happening? That they are not in control. That they cannot develop you. People are telling you in this country that they have billions of dollars. Be, you know what billions of dollars is? People don't understand these numbers. I keep telling you, your brain, our brain as human beings, not just your brain, our brain as human beings, have not evolved to understand this concept of these big numbers. I'm telling you, because people don't understand when somebody says, I have one billion dollars. One, Nikonio, you don't understand what that one billion mean. One billion. Eh? Okay. I always give this example to help people understand. One million seconds. One million seconds is 11 days. One billion seconds is 38.5 years. That is the difference between million and billion. I repeat, one million seconds is 11 days. One billion seconds is 38.5 years. Somebody that says I have one billion dollars can be throwing one one dollar like this for 38 years non-stop before you go finish. Somebody with a billion can be doing one dollar like this every second for 38 years before you go finish. Is this car you want to buy? Okay, Rolls Royce. How much is one Rolls Royce? Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, four hundred thousand. You buy hundred. Rolls Royce. Buy 100. That's 40 million dollars. You still have 960 million. You want house everywhere in the world. One, one million dollar house in all the major cities. So that's 1 million times maybe 200 major cities in the world. Uh, 200 million dollar. You still have 760 million. Okay, I want to buy my clothes, man. Clothes, man. The latest every... In fact, Gucci, Louis, all of Balenciaga. But what is the way they make... What they take, make on our brain, they touch. I don't want that. They will say for the culture. Now, that is the best part. We are doing it for the culture. And all the symbols are white. I don't even know. I don't know the meaning of Balenciaga. No, you know, Balenci... I don't know. I don't know. But anyway... So you have spent 100 million. 
you give Gucci 30. They just keep it in your company. Be sending me the latest. You still have what? 660 million dollars. So, we have amongst us certain black people, so called Nigerians, they tell you that they are Nigerians like you, with billions of not one billion dollar, billions of dollars. They did not earn it all, they got it by selling our natural resources, our common wealth. All these people with these billions in Nigeria, none of them have it without a license. They have one kind of license or the other. And if you have license to do to do to do this business, it means you are selling things that belong to the people. Whether a banking license, so it means you are doing business with our with our money in your bank. Whether an oil license, so you are selling our oil. Whether an agricultural license, so you are using our land to grow food that we cannot afford. Most of them are using that land to grow cash crops that we cannot even eat. Imagine a country where Food is so expensive, but people are using land, most of the land. Apparently, from what we tell you, say, between 65 and 70 percent of the arable land in Nigeria is used to grow cash crops. Cash crops. That means food you and I cannot eat, but Oibo need for their industry. So tell me how colonialism has changed. Tell me how anything has changed in this country from the time of colonialism. You say Oibo left. They left, but all their plantations and their minds are still intact. How did they live? And they are still doing those same things that they used to do during colonialism. It's not that like those cash crops are not suddenly turned to food crops. Okay. So now, amongst us, there are people with billions that they have made from us. I repeat, these are not Bill Gates. These are not the Bill Gates. So you, say, you could say, okay, without Bill Gates, there is no Microsoft. Because you can't tell me that without Dangote, nobody will sell me cement. There must be somebody to sell me cement. Nobody will grow food and spaghetti. Yeah, eh. No, don't tell me that. This is not a Steve Jobs. That without him, there's no uh, Apple. This is not what they do. They sell our oil. They sell our the things that belong to us. That if anybody sell them, you will become billionaire. And they, when they were going to do these things, when they were selling it to us, especially under this Obasanjo, job, that man is so wicked and. You Niger any Nigerian that praises Obasanjo for any reason, you will go to hell. You must go to hell because you are you have shown that you are beyond salvation. That you whatever Obasanjo does in this country and you support him, you have shown that you are against Africa, you don't respect Africa, that the atrocities and whatever kind of atrocity that Africans have gone through bears has no bearing in your emotions as long as your own interests are served. You are an oppressor. Anybody that can praise Obasanjo for anything is an oppressor. He is an oppressor. Uh -uh. Nobody can tell me anything. It means you don't respect Africans. You have no regard for any atrocity that we have gone through as African people. You are there to serve your selfish interest. You are there to serve your... When Obasanjo was going to give these people all our property in 2001, there is nothing these men did not promise us. In fact, they were telling us that Nigeria would be better than Dubai in 10 years. If they took all our property, these people run this country, they took everything. They cannot build this country. With all these billions, with all these billions, which of your candidates discuss with you redistribution of wealth? When we say redistribution of wealth, we are not saying we want to see six or dollars money or Dangote's money or Illumelu's money and share it for everybody. No! We mean we are going to use laws. Hmm? real african laws to channel their profits towards the building of your schools the building of your hospitals the building of your roads the modernization of your industries and your technologies to bring you to full competition with the world that is with a world that is competing against you do you know that the world is competing against us even if we are not competing against them but this is your elite they only want me their children only their children get rights to enter that competition. You and your own children, your only right is to help their children to carry the bag while they are going to the competition. Finish! Then when we are telling you that you have a right to also go for that competition because of your own fear of freedom, 
you go say she only smoke Igbo. I'm happy that that's all you can say about me. That's all you can say. She only smoke Igbo. We who say who be your dealer today? Wait till he smoke today. Ah, we say quit weed though. And you've been saying this for over 15 years. I have not stopped. In fact, today I wear but first weed shirt. Doesn't that tell you you should stop? That it doesn't work. It doesn't, it's not going to change anything. I will continue to pepper your eye and smoke it. <laughs> betrayed by your rulers and, their, and your elites. All of them are betrayers. All of them are betrayers. And they look at you like charity case. You are a charity case. You are not part of them. You are charity to them. That's the best they have for you. You know, and all these your celebs and influencers and motivational speakers, they want you to see the charity of these people as some kind of blessing, not insult. My brothers and sisters, they are charities and insults to you, to your children, and to the atrocities that your ancestors have gone through. For them to take what belongs to all of us after what we have gone through as a people. Look at what we have suffered in our lives as African people. There are some African people now have the opportunity to at least restore some dignity to our lives. Instead of that, they rather drive Rolls Royce and uh, fly in private jet and go and rent yacht of Oyuboma for 3 million euro. I said that that is, a, that is success. That is success. They are showing at the age, I'm doing 16 birthday, which year birthday, my success story. After I've ex extracted and exploited my people for over three decades, is to rent one person's yacht and do birthday party for all of you to see that I'm, hey, hey, look at what I've achieved. Hey, 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 hey. You are mugus. And all of you are posting and sharing and praising. I think, I think when they do that thing, eh, when they do that thing, they need to test whether you people are still fools. And every day, you people show them that you are fools. <laughs> I repeat, they do that thing to test whether they still be mugu, whether they be, una be death, and una they show constantly, say, una be mugu, una death. Because that party can be held without anybody knowing. That boat can be rented without anybody knowing. They go and do their thing. Those cars can be bought without anybody knowing. That it was bought. They will just they drive their thing. If you see them, you not see them. Now I go post that. But they release it. It is a it is called social engineering. Una be mugu. And they tell you social engineering. These people they employ the same racist social engineers that engineer the American society that keep black people suffering in those countries. They employ those same people here. But you don't hear that not one hear that one. As long as they open nightclub for now, and if you use TikTok and Instagram, the same people where they sell on TikTok and Instagram say America now is fighting to close down TikTok because TikTok is Chinese, is influencing their country. If Instagram now is all over Nigeria, are we complaining that it's influencing our children? Are we complaining about TikTok? If we complain that one now, they will say, Oh, hey, you don't want African people to enjoy life. We are not on the same page as the rest of the world because our myopic rulers and their elitist cousins and friends because you don't understand everybody in government hmm? it is their friends and family that are in the private sector the nigerian private sector and public sector are one there's no difference The Nigerian public and private sector are one. There is no difference. They are all guys together. They are all doing meetings together. See what they tell you now? Before election, hmm? before election, all the bankers, see they go take picture with Peter Obi, Lumen Lucef, they there. Peter Obi, a fellow banker. Hey, we are supporting. He don't lose now. Oh, Elumelu in uh, visitor yesterday, Bola Tinubu, the winner. You think they are discussing something different? These people are one. They are one. There is no division among them. It just be like friends. We go play football match. We will be friends now. Every Sunday we play match. When we speak ourselves, we go play the match now. You don't want to lose. You want to lose. Even though not just Sunday sets. You have to see Nigeria election as Sunday, Sunday sets neighborhood football 
where we play, somebody go win. You go try, you go play your best. You will play your best on the field to win that Sunday set. It not affect the friendship. What will be friend for that place? When we play set finish, we will go drink, we will go chop together. Do you understand? We we'll go chop, we we'll go play, we we'll do everything together. After set, you will there now. You will go watch the set now, spectator. Sunday, Sunday set will not be anything. You begin fight your friend because one team, one win, one team. You now, now begin fight, blow, blow na eye, you now blow na eye, finish. You now see say the people will play match, they drink and eat together. I don't get it. So they, they are sitting on billions, all these people. From in Nigeria, talking, Obi is a billionaire. You said it yourself. Any billionaire in Nigeria can revolutionize any uh, sector in this country for the people of this country without help. Once you have up to billion, you see, in education, you want change for this country, you can change it. You and your friends, you call them, want to develop our country. This is not for profit, and it's not charity. When I will constitute a, a committee, put a board of people with no education, say develop, we will pay, we will fund it. Improve, even our healthcare, even our housing, whatever it is, these people have amassed the wealth to develop this country. The wealth that we need to develop Nigeria is in people's hands and back accounts in Panama and in London and in all the places that they hide all our money all over the world. Yet people sit down there fighting over crumbs and talking shit. What's going on? Lagos is a Yoruba land. Yes, it was at some point. Maybe, but not anymore. Sorry, Yoruba people, I'm sorry. It's not yours. You don't call none of your institutions work. Where is the Yoruba court? Where is where what what do you do? Where, where, where now Yoruba they issue land? We issue land here based on European law system. You have no say. We have no say. Is it your uh, say na uh, a job they do? Everybody go bank. Even person they do a job, keep a job money inside bank. I be went bank, not give everybody cash now. Anybody see any money collect from any African institution? Did any money come? Is there anything African people can spend that is not tied to the dollar? The whole of Africa has been taken. The whole of the world was at one time taken. Go and read the history of the Chinese people. Go and check the history of the Chinese. Look what the Chinese people went through in the hands of the British people, in the hands of the Americans. Because by that time, America was becoming a strong empire. Go and read about the opioid wars. Where Europe forced the Chinese people to become heroin addicts. Forced them nee, to become heroin addicts. Our own was alcohol. They forced all our elites in Africa to become alcoholics. Many of the deals that were signed, many of these so-called protectorate, many of the kings signed it, they were drunk of gin and whiskey. We they never taste before. They never see that kind of strong drink. We don't do that kind of ammo we get. All this uh, will go on and new team will begin distill after we discovered Oyibo gin. Africans didn't have strong alcohol like that. Oyibo knock them whiskey, people head blow. They'll come, um, they'll come, some, uh, come town, get everybody in the town drunk. Like friends, you know, give you drink. We don't know, say hang over the day. Everybody there hang over the next morning. We're not going to buy in our rock. You know if you fight now, you wait to sleep from yesterday, shall you? You don't know what you went through. You don't know what we've been through. And I don't know the steps we don't take to reach where we did. And why they now make sure say the mistake where they make that time they say they allow us to see our reality. Because under colonialism, which was the next step after slavery, under colonialism, we could still see our oppressor. We could see our oppression. And our people stood up and fought it again. And they realize, say, if these people can see what is happening to them, they will dismantle it totally. We must hide it from them. We must put it in a way that they don't know it is happening. 
We must find our friends among them to that look like them, to act like what is going on belongs to them. That's what is going on. And the moment you see, you can see beyond these things. I mean, ask this, this is the question. This is where they let themselves down with all these billions being amassed in this country that they are proud to say that they have. Not because they really talk and they tell Bloomberg, that they tell Forbes, this one get five billion dollar, this one get twelve billion dollar, this one get eight billion dollar, this one get twenty five billion dollar. Why is this country still like this? So until you people start to seek political solutions that go in the line of this ideology, you will never progress. Now don't go ever move past one a day, playing this or six months politics. June to February, eight months politics to line up behind one oppressor that will help you run run this run this European enterprise. And also, before I go, the last point I want to make is that educational level in this country is too bad. We must begin to understand and comprehend. My post, I say, uh, now Portuguese name Lagos. It was a European slave port. I do not mean that Lagos means slave port. Go to the old maps of the world. Go and go on Google. You have Google. Use these things. You have YouTube. Check the old maps. Many old maps. In the era of um, slavery, they called this our West African coast, all the way from Calabar, Accra, Lagos, all the... It was the slave coast from Ghana, Gold Coast. We were slavers. Our, our elites, and we have to say that, our elites were real slavers in this side. Slavery, they loved it, even when British stopped it. Somebody like Madame Tinubu, she didn't stop. Everyone you Tinubu, she don't want to stop. Ah! That Africa you think of, that echo, whatever, that one that uh, about Bini came to form, that one that they now took, it is no more. It is no more. I'm sorry, I have to tell you. All those things, Africa is gone. That Africa is no more. They've ripped it up, they've ripped it apart, they've sold it, they've destroyed it, they've hidden it, they've, they've completely dismantled it. It is this, in fact, they've dismantled it. The only part of Africa that survives, and it's great that it survives, is the African spiritual system. That no matter how bad it is, we still have uh, some babas that understand our Ifa cosmological system. That can link us back to the deeds of the Shangos, the Obatalas, the Oguns. That can bring us to Oya, to Yemoja, to start to reconceptualize. You hear me? Reconceptualize our world recreate our world reimagine we have to reimagine this world we cannot just sit down without imagination many of you lack imagination i'm sorry to say you must reimagine the world anyway i wanted to do this live since but i've been a bit down <coughs> you know say you're about people any small thing you don't do them now, now Juju they will do you. Nobody can tell me that the Yoruba people of Lagos did not have hand in this my last two days sickness. But they said no. Say now, nah, man, they jam. I don't wear since yesterday small, but I just make a really set before today. When I'm gonna try me, you when I'm gonna try me. So anyway. That's the plan. That's the, that's the message. Sorry. That's the message. That's the message. We must reimagine. Reimagine ourselves. Reimagine our country. Don't believe the lies. Nobody. All of them. Everybody in this country, one way or the other, they are working for imperialist interests. Imperialist interests. You understand and we this is our great battle of this generation to break these pillars of imperialism to reclaim completely our destiny breaking these pillars of imperialism and reclaiming completely 
our destiny. Thank you very much.